Hi, I'm Yingwei Peng, a professor in biostatistics at the Queen's University, Canada. I like to talk about how cure models are related to COVID-19 research. COVID-19 prevention and treatment have been a key topic among researchers since it broke out early this year. In Canada, the country where I'm living, the federal funding agencies such as NSERC and the CIHR have initiated several rapid research funding opportunities in 2020 to support research on COVID-19 that can benefit the society. By the end of November 2020, several pharmaceutical companies such as AstraZeneca, Moderna, and Pfizer have released their interim analysis of their clinical trials of vaccines, and some show over 90% of efficacy. All the research work heavily depends on the data analysis using statistical models due to the nature of the research. Researchers collect the data and then use the proper statistical method to analyze data and hope to answer questions such as, how long is the time for an uninfected person from receiving a vaccine to become infected by the coronavirus? How long is the time from onset of the infection to symptom development, to hospital admission, and to ICU admission, et cetera. Cure models are special survival models that uh, handle time to event data or the event history data. In the typical settings for survival models, time to event, such as infection or hospitalization, is collected from a random sample of patients. Due to the dropout or the time limit of the clinical trials or other factors, the entire duration of the time may not be observed for some patient. And only the partial time from the beginning to the time of dropout or the end of the trials is observed. Such time is the so-called sensor time. There are many standard survival models available for time to event data that are subject to sensing, such as the Kaplan-Meier survival estimator and the Cox proportional hazard model. And there are useful to review the uh, distribution of the time to event, as well as the effects of the factors that are associated with the time. However, an implicit assumption in the standard survival model is that the event would have been observable for those sensor patients had the dropout not happened or the trial time been unlimited. This may not hold in many studies. In the context of COVID-19 research, if we're interested in the efficacy of a vaccine in a clinical trial, there is a possibility that the vaccine develops a full immune protection for some study subjects who will never be infected however long the trial is. When considering the time to hospitalization, we now understand that not every infected person will be end up in the hospital or in ICU, especially those who are young, who do not have severe comorbidities, Thus, the implicit assumptions of the standards of our models may not hold for such data. Even though the standards of our analysis model may still be useful to review some features of the time, they will not use the information correctly from the subjects who will never be infected or hospitalized, and they will miss the important findings that can be important for the vaccine assessment or for healthcare sectors to prepare for the COVID-19 pandemic. Cure model extends the standards of our models by allowing some study subjects to be cured or immune to the event of interest, such as infection or a hospitalization, which make them particularly suitable to analyze data for COVID-19 research. Mixture cure model are the most popular cure models, which allow the two separate models for the data. One model is similar to the standards of our models, is applicable only to those who develop or will develop the event of interest, 
such as infection or hospitalization. The other model is similar to the logistic regression model and is used to model the probability that the subject is cured or is immune to the infection or hospitalization. A challenge in building the two models is that the unknown cure status of the sensor patients. Because the times of both immune patients and the non-immune patients whose time to infection and hospitalizations are longer than the trial duration will be censored. Special estimation methods have been developed to overcome the challenge so that the two models can be estimated simultaneously. Dr. Binbin Yu and myself recently wrote a book on cure models that is to be published soon by CRC Chapman Health. This is the first stats book in more than two decades that devotes to the recent advance in the cure models theory, estimation method, and the software implementation. Details of the mixture cure models estimation method, different type of the mixture cure models, and other type of cure models are presented in the book. Both Dr. Yu and myself have decades of experience in developing the cure models and applying the cure models in clinical and observational studies. In fact, Dr. Yu is a senior statistician in AstraZeneca, one of the pharmaceutical companies that I mentioned above that recently released uh, a promising vaccine. The book includes our own research work as well as the others and it should be a useful reference book for those who are interested in using the cure model to analyze data from COVID-19 research.